I'm Dr. Katie Avalar. I'm a veterinarian and this is how I work it. I'm going to take you through 24 hours of my wellness routine. I see 75 to 100 animals per week. I work five to seven shifts per week. My appointment schedule is eight hours, but I'm almost always at the hospital longer than that. The most challenging part of my job is doing everything I can for a case and they're just not getting any better. The most rewarding part is the exact opposite of that, having a real really challenging case and watching them get better. And the best part is being around animals all day. Yeah, I love that part. It's about 5.30 right now. I usually wake up and take my dogs for a run. So let me wake my dog up. He always sleeps in the same place. Also, ready to go for a run? Even though we're all very sleepy at that time, we get up. I use a harness so that it never pulls too hard around her neck. We usually do three miles in the morning. Right. Let's go. Sometimes that takes a half hour, sometimes it takes me an hour. Good morning, I just finished my cold shower. I always take a cold shower in the morning because it wakes me up. Everything I shower with is usually unscented. I like the Jason and Dr. Bronner's products. They're both really natural. They don't dry out my skin. I don't like to smell like anything artificial. My patients will pick up on that. They like to smell you as a person. They get a lot of information from that. My morning routine is really fast. I wash my face with CeraVe face wash and then moisturize with Vanna cream. I try to use really gentle products because I break out really easily. I like styling cream. It doesn't smell like hairsprays. I use the Tony B styling cream after I get out of the shower and I also use a little bit before I go to work so that my curls stay in place. I don't want to feel like I have makeup on during the day. God forbid I'm rushing into an emergency surgery. The last thing I want is mascara in my eye or my face mask caking up some concealer. So I'll usually leave for work around seven. On my way to work, I have my water with me. I won't have a lot of time during the day to eat or drink. So I try to hydrate before and after. I'm just getting to work and here's my crew, Helen and Betty. I went into this field because I love adrenaline rushes and I've prepared my whole life for this. Whenever an emergency comes in, instead of panicking, I program myself to just become laser focused on getting this animal better and stabilizing them. My boss always says every surgeon knows what to do when something goes right. A good surgeon knows what to do when something goes wrong. I always plan for what I would do if something were to go wrong. And 99.9% .9 of the time, everything goes right and you don't have to do anything extra. But afterward, you're exhausted. You feel like you just ran a marathon. So a lot of times I will tell the receptionist to move some appointments for me. I just need 20 minutes to reset myself. And I usually go for a walk around the block. I'm about to go into an exam with my next patient on hell. She has chronic kidney disease. So we're gonna take a look, see how she's doing. Seven, seven. Which is great because she hasn't lost any weight. She's so good. Sorry, baby. There are some tartar on those back teeth, but the front teeth don't look bad. You should brush your dog's teeth once a day. Fluoride is toxic to animals, so never use your toothpaste. If you're not able to brush your animal's teeth or you just don't have the time, like me, there are products. One of the things is greenies. Okay. It is really good for their teeth. It's funny how dogs and cats create their own language with their owners. Yeah, her eyes look good. Do you notice any changes? Well, right before she gets like vomits, they get very cloudy looking. Oh. I rely on the owners to tell me because they know the little quirks. So we should get blood work. I'm gonna take her purring slot. Little oh, burrito cat. We call them cat burritos. I always carry the travel size of all of these soaps and lotions because things happen during the day. Sometimes abscesses will... <laughs> I'm not... Should I say that? Yeah, no, tell me the story. It was 
First thing in the morning, this dog had a big red lump on its neck. It looked like an abscess to me. So I started applying some pressure to it and it was right in the path. It got all over my face. Luckily I was wearing glasses, but things like this happen all day, every day. So during the day, I am constantly washing my face and I'm always applying lotion because my face will dry out from how many times I'm washing it. Moose has been having some urinary issues. He's been peeing in the house. So we're gonna do a rectal exam to make sure I don't feel any masses, to make sure his prostate isn't enlarged. I don't feel anything. Okay. But we could do an x-ray and see if he has any stones. In yeah, go. When I first started in this profession, I got nauseous with all these really strong smells. I really like peppermint when I'm feeling nauseous. If I felt like I was going to pass out, I would just take a minute in a corner and smell my peppermint gum. The smell of poop doesn't bother me as much. Anal glands are a big issue for us. How would you describe the smell of an anal gland? Um, rancid? <laughs> <laughs> like a dead fish. Like, yeah. Rotted dead fish left in the heat. Luckily, humans don't have them. They're meant to mark their territory, but now they don't serve much of a purpose since they're mostly relaxing in our houses. So we end up having to express them, and you just never know where they're going to go. And once you get anal gland in your hair, it will not come out unless you wash it multiple times. I've been so desensitized that now an owner will vomit or pass out in the room and I don't even smell it. People will say to me, why didn't you tell me to leave? But usually I just put them in a chair out front, get some fresh air, <laughs> and I make a medical note in their chart. I went into this job because I love animals. I love every type of animal. But unfortunately, they don't feel the same about me. Every time they walk into the room, I see all the signs that they're uncomfortable. Comfortable. That might be they're baring their teeth and lunging at me. Cats might be scratching at the carrier and hissing. Dogs, especially anxious dogs, they don't like when we hover over them. Whenever they're really stressed out, we like to keep them on the floor where they're comfortable, and then we just come down to their level. To win over very anxious animals is squeeze cheese. It's not the best for their diet, but if I have a really stressed animal, it's more important to me to make them comfortable. I tend to get bitten and scratched more than than I'd like. I will immediately clean my wound with some sort of antiseptic. I'll put an antibiotic ointment on it, and then at the next few days, I always apply scar cream. This is Adaptil. I always use these in the exam rooms. It's a pheromone that helps to calm dogs down. It's supposed to mimic the maternal pheromone, and the fell away is for cats. He has a, a luxating patella. So their knee is set up just like ours. Their patella, which is their kneecap, will slide to one side or the other because this groove is shallow. I really love this company, Figs, for scrubs. I have my figs on. They have petite sizes. I like them because honestly, I'm on the floor all the time. I'm rolling around with animals and they feel more like athletic wear. And then my Ultra Boost. I love Adidas Ultra Boost. They feel like clouds on my feet. I probably wash my hands 20 times a day, if not more. I take my antiseptic scrub. It comes with this little device so that I can wash under my nails. My nail care is very embarrassing. I don't polish, I keep them really short. Scrubbing into surgery, you don't want nail polish on and you don't want any bacteria that could stick under your nails. A study just came out that said if your nails are painted, it doesn't introduce more bacteria into the surgery. Little device, old school. And I'm also lazy and don't feel like getting my nails done. So my hands get really, really dry. And my nails are not very glamorous because dogs are licking them all the time like you, Obi. I use a hemp-based moisturizer for my hands. It takes down inflammation. I always try to use products that are cruelty-free and pretty natural ingredients. Whenever I'm scrubbing into surgery, I take all of my jewelry off. So I try to keep it really light, even though I love jewelry. There's a little trick for my engagement ring. I hook it onto a scrunchie and hook it into my bra. I like to put my hair back because I don't want anything disgusting getting in it. I really like 
like those telephone cord scrunchies. Because they stay put. And then you put on your surgical cap and mask, your surgical gown and your surgical gloves on. The worst thing is when you get all scrubbed up after 30 minutes and you have an itch. And that's when you have to really <laughs> meditate yourself out of it. Sometimes I will wear contacts, but when I'm in surgery under a surgical light, they'll dry out. My skin is very acne prone. I get blemishes a lot. My surgical mask, it conforms to your nose. And this is why I get so many pimples around my mouth. For the first few days, I'll put benzoyl peroxide on the blemish, cover it up with some concealer. That's really all I do. I don't go crazy about it. So Linguini's here and he's having some skin issues. Cats and dogs that have the smushed faces, they tend to have a lot of skin issues because of their skin folds. They tend to get yeast infections. I did have a pet rat when I was 16. I brought her everywhere with me. She only lived three years, which is pretty good for a rat. I adopted my dog before I went to vet school. His name is Oscar, he's 10. He is the light of my life. He's perfect. I knew I wasn't gonna have much time to take care of a dog, so I made sure he was an older guy that would be happy, relaxing at home. And he went through all of vet school with me. Just this year, I decided to adopt a puppy so that he had some company. And she is challenging and really testing my behavioral education. She's definitely chewed up some couches but he seems to love the company and she's learning from him, so it's very cute. So euthanasia is a really tough part of my job. Sometimes it can be really rewarding. An animal that's lived a long, healthy life and their owner is just choosing a peaceful ending instead of watching them suffer. But sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes after a really hard case, I need some time for myself. I, I need to go cry a little bit for the animal for the client. Uh, my trick is that I'll splash some cold water on my face. Um, sometimes I'll take some ice, put it under my eyes, just to feel like it's waking me up again and I can go back into my next appointment and just reset. A lot of us deal with something called compassion fatigue where the entire day you are giving you know, giving bad news, taking care of really sick, ill patients. A lot of the day is also good and happy, but those things tend to weigh you down. I put a lot of importance on my self-care and mental health. I make sure that when I'm not at work, I'm doing things that make me happy, that make me feel good. After work, I always take my dogs to the beach. Being by an ocean helps to calm me down, and just being with my dogs in general. Being in nature makes me happy. If I have a day off, I use usually set it aside to go for a hike. I'll meditate, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 20 minutes, but it's nice to just be in your own head for a little bit. Whenever I get home from work, I make sure to take my clothes off, my shoes off at the door. So I don't bring anything infectious into the house. And then I'll change into something at the door. I'm not very good at doing my makeup. I guess because I, I never wear it. Usually I go very simple. I do a tinted moisturizer. I'll put in my contacts and I'll put some mascara on. I also do really like darker lips, so I try to do that too, a, a tint. I try not to wash my hair every day if I can get away with it, but on days where something gets into it or it was trapped under a surgical cap, I have to. A lot of people ask me how often should I bathe my animal or what should I bathe them with? So there's two shampoos I like for dogs and cats. One is highlight shampoo. I also like Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo. Sometimes human shampoos don't work well on animals because it's made for human skin, which is more acidic. The big thing with animals is not to bathe them too much. Once a month, if you live in a humid area, you can do twice a month. That way you're not drying out their skin. If a human is allergic to their pet, most of the time it's the dander. I like to use organic baby wipes and I just recommend wiping down their fur once a day. It's very embarrassing but I watch TLC when I get home. I love 90 Day Fiance. It's my guilty pleasure. I 
try to be in bed by 10, but sometimes I don't even get out of the hospital until well after 10. I was supposed to leave three hours ago, but an emergency just walked in that was in a dog fight. We just stabilized him. He lost a lot of blood, and I'll probably have to suture his wounds closed later tonight. I'm just getting home after a really long day. Sleep is important for me. I know that my brain works better on eight hours of sleep, so I always try to get eight hours of sleep. A lot of times it's not possible. Oscar, say goodnight.